Hello, my beautiful rock stars. It's your girl Rocky, your revolutionary hippie from Life is Rocky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Please like, share, and subscribe and watch my long form content. So that's my polyamorous journey, mommy fever, Rocky's reflections, um, what a, uh, becoming a feminine woman series, all of these playlists, any video that's over a minute long, help me get monetized up in here. Thank you, you. And if you didn't catch the update, your girl cut the rest of her locks off. I am back to my curls, baby, back to my curls. So this is a big chop. It's a little bit more than I want, but you know, it'll grow out and I'll have the do that I want. <laughs> so today on my polyamorous journey, first check out my new sticker that I got on non-monogamy visibility day. So I made a couple of shorts about attending that event and what that day is and all that. But yes, polyamory, woohoo! infinity heart. I don't have the new flag. I do have the old flag that's currently falling down that I need to put back up that has the pie symbol, but um, I don't have the new flag yet. And I haven't seen any like on a stick. So looking forward to that, but definitely we'll rep the affinity heart all day. So definitely check out my other polyamorous journey videos. That's how I always knew I was polyamorous. I'll link that in the info cards above as well as at the end of the video. I also have um uh I have a one penis policy for me. I also have um I do not want a thruple or a triad those videos. Um so this would be my fourth long form of my polyamorous journey, but I definitely have tons of short uh, form as well as my own video resource playlist that I created on my journey that's full of education that's full of representation it has a lot of goodies in there um I don't know if you can see it on life is rocky I know you can see it on my it's a real podcast youtube channel because that's where I created it but I feel like you can see it on life is rocky I don't know but it's just it's called polyamory slash ethical non-monogamy and it's a video resource playlist um but yeah, I also have my playlist on my channel, My Polyamorous Journey. That's me breaking down a lot of things and talking about my journey. So check it out. Check it out. Um, but today I am going to tell you <laughs> um, five ways uh, to know if you're polyamorous or not. Um, now, these are some that I've got from other advocates, from articles, um, from awareness within my own journey. Um, but yeah, so here it goes. Okay. <laughs> and again, I would say preface watching how I always knew I was polyamorous. So you can also see what my individual journey is. I'm not going to go into my journey with every one of these, but, um, but definitely give that a watch. All right. So how do you know if you're polyamorous? Five ways to tell. Number one, you feel trapped in monogamy. <laughs> um, for me, I felt like I was in a box. Like, it's literally like I can't connect. There's so many rules. It's just I feel trapped and I don't like that feeling. And there doesn't need to be that feeling. You can have consensual non-monogamy where you have the freedom to connect. And it is such a freedom to just be able to flow and vibe and connect with who you connect with. And it's, it's, it's nice. Um, so yeah, if you feel trapped in monogamy, not saying polyamory may be for you, maybe the larger umbrella of ethical non-monogamy, but it's, it's a step in the, maybe monogamy isn't right for you. Um, number two, is this going to be a shorter video? We'll see. <laughs> Um, number two is you've experienced loving more than one person at one time. You've experienced being attracted to more than one person at one time. You've experienced having crushes or romantic interests of more than one person at the same time. And then you struggle between choosing between these people. So any love triangle that is in any form of media ever, <laughs> is basically saying this, that 
this happens quite a lot. And even when you're in a committed monogamous relationship, you still experience physical and or sexual attraction to other people. You just don't act on it. Um, so this is where the philosophy of polyamory comes in as far as love being abundant. In monogamy, we are taught that love is scarce, but it's not. We understand it when it comes to our family, when it comes to our friends. If you have multiple children, you love them abundantly. It's not like, nope, I love the first one, can't love the second. It's like, no, love is energy. It's infinite. It grows. Um, so yes, <laughs> you can love more than one person at one time. You can be definitely attracted to more than one person at one time. Um, and then, yeah, if you look at your crushes, um, yeah, that can happen. Love triangles, like I said, it happens. And then the only reason choosing um, usually happens is if, you know, you're in monogamous relationships, you can only have one, right? That also breeds competition. I'll definitely say that. Um, number three, you enjoy new relationship energy which is a concept within polyamory, you enjoy the novelty of connections, the flirting, the first dates, the first kiss, the first sex, the first everything. Um, and just different people have different energies. They offer different things. They have different connections with people. So being able to still date once you're in, you know, a committed, stable relationship is nice because it's, it's, it's new. You know, like there's a reason people like the single dating. There's a reason people like being in relationships. There's benefits to both. So it's it's okay <laughs> to have both <laughs> long as it's consensual. Okay. Um, number four, you are willing to grow. Let me take a sip on this one. So... People like to think polyamory or ethical non-monogamy is a free-for-all where you can be careless, but no, that's, that's, no. <laughs> you have to be willing to grow. This is not for the weak-hearted, the weak-minded, the I am who I am and that's it. No, you have to be willing to grow. Being polyamorous will challenge you in ways that you've never experience like I'm a whole licensed marriage and family therapist and it taught me an entirely paradigm shift way of thinking about relationships like I went to school I practiced like relationships was kind of centered to that and it's like it totally shifted my perspective so if that happened in the professional field <laughs> you know damn sure this happened in the personal okay um so that being said how do you need to grow okay so a, I'm not trying to put numbers in for the main. Um, you need to be able to deprogram from monogamy. We live in a mononormative society. Everything, everywhere is monogamous. That's our TV shows. That's our movies. That's our music. That's our just every form of like most of our understanding of relationships, whether that's our parents or our siblings or the neighbors or extended family or our friends, like everybody's monogamous, right? So we have to change our thinking in order to embrace ethical non-monogamy because we've been programmed to only think in monogamous relationship terms. Um, and I'll give an example. Will I? I'm having a little bit of mom brain in this moment. Um, so, okay, back to the love is scarce. We think that, oh, well, if you love me, then you can't possibly be interested in somebody else. And that's not true. It's not true at all. Because again, we understand the abundance of love when it comes to children. So suddenly it's romantic and that goes down like, no. Um... So there's some things that we've been programmed in mononormative society that's just not true nor applicable to polyamory. Um, and I would also say that toxic monogamy has been normalized. There's definitely healthy monogamy, don't get me wrong, okay? 
but toxic non-monogamy has been normalized so like the possession and ownership mentality is just deemed as okay in monogamous relationships and that's not that's not healthy for monogamous relationships um jealousy is seen instead of emotion as a character trait or a personality trait and again that's not okay we're not allowed to be jealous in any other form you have to grow through that so so yeah it's it's you got to deprogram from uh mononormativity and monogamy um another thing you have to be willing to grow in b <laughs> is language you are walking into a culture, a community, something that has existed for decades, if not a couple centuries, like it's, you're walking into something that's been established. And there's language that helps us move through this like community. So you have to learn the language. You may not like labels, but they are very helpful to understanding what people are seeking, what um, we want the dynamics to be just understanding ourselves and our relation to each other. Okay. Um, as far as how to learn that language, uh, Marjani Lane, um, I think that's how I pronounce her name. Uh, what M A R G A N I space Lane L A N E, um, was very helpful for me. Uh, in the beginning of my journey, she has since started making more reels instead of like definitive content. Um, but uh, my uh, polyamorous black girl um, on Instagram started making reels with uh, definitions and things. So it's definitely definitely helpful. People grow in their content, but um, especially as algorithms change and all these platforms change as far as monetization. But uh, but yeah, there are definitely resources out there. Um, I also learned from the More Than Two Glossary, which is a book that has some controversy, but the glossary is definitely clutch. There's other like glossaries and just dictionaries and stuff out there where you can look up the language and find out what means what. You also have to be willing to grow in communication. Like not only is communication essential in one relationship is definitely key when there are multiple relationships. So you have to learn effective communication and listening skills. Like, bruh, <laughs> ain't no joke out here. Like when they say communication is important in monogamous relationships, you will not survive polyamory if you don't have good communication skills. It's not gonna happen, okay? Um, and then the last thing I would say, you have to be willing to grow in, in polyamory is emotions. You have to understand yourself in ways that you will never have been confronted about. Like insecurities, attachment, emotions, just the ways that you're thinking and feeling and how it's showing up physically. Like you will be confronted with things you've never had to face. So you have to grow emotionally. You have to be willing to sit with those uncomfortable emotions. You have to be willing to learn about yourself, to grow, to evolve, and to, to understand where your comfort zone is and what where you are willing to grow, what your boundaries are. But also, what's an emotion that it's like, oh, this is really rooted in insecurity. How can I become more secure? Like you really got to do your work. So I definitely suggest therapists who are polyamorous, um, either aligned, affirming, whatever. Uh, Cause yeah, it's gonna be some work. It's gonna be some work. Okay. All right. Uh, number five, as far as how do you know if you're polyamorous? Uh, you struggle with monogamy. So the first one was you feel trapped in monogamy. But just because you feel trapped in monogamy doesn't necessarily mean you're doing anything that's not monogamous. <laughs> but if you're struggling with monogamy, yeah, this would be the cheating. This would be being a side piece. So you're not in the relationship, but you are with someone who's in a monogamous relationship. Um, and then also if you have multiple sex partners as well, um, a lot of people reference romantic monogamy, but if you are also experiencing sexual non-monogamy, you may be closer to the umbrella that is ethical and consensual non-monogamy um, than someone who isn't. So cheating is cheating, okay? Now, none of, none of it is acceptable anywhere, 
okay? Cheating is when you are violating agreements previously made in a relationship. Um, I also look at cheating as it's based in lying, secrecy, deception, and betrayal, and none of that is okay. Um, again, if you're going to be non-monogamous, be ethical and consensual about it. But uh, yeah, so there's that. And then if you're a side piece, you're not respecting that relationship, even if you're not in it. Like I've been a side piece before and while I was not under any delusion that, oh, well, he wouldn't do this to me. Nah, <laughs> if he's doing that to his main, he's very well likely to do it to you. But um, I was at a time where I was being very selfish. So I didn't care that I was possibly hurting someone else. And that's the key part of ethical um, non-monogamy is harm reduction. So even though I'm not in a relationship with this woman, um, I'm still causing harm from her partner cheating with me. So again, it wasn't necessarily my relationship to respect, but just being a good person um, and caring about other people, even if it doesn't impact you directly, um, is, is possibly a reason. Like, again, just because you are experiencing these like non-monogamous aspects doesn't mean you are willing to abide by the ethics and, and consent of it all, but it just makes it, it makes you a better person and better in space of relating to other people. And then as far as the multiple sex partners, um, I definitely experienced sexual non-monogamy. Um, and it wasn't, that's more normalized than the romantic non-monogamy. But when you are in a monogamous relationship, so like open relationships usually have a primary relationship and then, um, extramarital <laughs> uh, sexual relationships um, or sexual partners. So it's, and then definitely when you're just single and dating, it's, people are aware of it, but still like terms like ho and things like that come up. And to me, it's like, if I'm having consensual non-monogamous sex, then why does it matter? There's still shame there, which I don't understand why. Um, but you may be more towards the non-monogamous community, the monogamous community, because a lot of that shame is coming from the monogamous community. So, yeah. Um, and the special bonus tip to understand if you are polyamorous or in the bubble of ethical non-monogamy is if you are okay with your partners having partners. <laughs> now we'll say, if you don't experience jealousy like that, then yeah, polyamory might be for you. But even if you do experience jealousy, it's, it's not like you can't grow through it. Like I said, jealousy is an emotion. It's based in insecurity. You can focus on how to become more secure in your relationship or within yourself. Um, another reason for you're okay with your partners having partners is if you get aroused, if you're thinking about your partner being with someone else, definitely may be a sign. <laughs> Um, if you experience compersion with your partner having other partners, so you're excited to hear about their date, you're excited to help them get ready. Um, like me and my partner, we enjoy like when we see women out, so we're like, oh, she fine. Oh, you see her, you know, so like that compersion. I also feel compersion when it's in relation to my partner's growth as a polyamorous man um, and how these connections have inspired him. So that provides conversion for me but you can also experience neutrality where it's like I don't really get excited from seeing or hearing you or hearing about your other partners I don't get aroused but I'm not necessarily jealous either I'm just neutral like it's literally okay that you have other partners cool do you I'm polyamorous for me myself and I you know because I want multiple partners and I think that's pretty much the the summary is that at the end of the day, polyamory is an individual identity. You can be polyamorous with zero partners, one partner, two partner, or more. Um, so what your partner's doing, like, is up to them. There is monopoly relationships where one person is monogamous, another person is polyamorous. 
Um, but a lot of people, when you look at a lot of the groups and the forums and stuff, and they ask, how do you know you were polyamorous? A lot of it is individual. And it's these five things of, of what I talked about, um, plus some of the bonus. Um, but a lot of it is just like, I've been able to connect with multiple people at one time. Monogamy feels like a box and I'm willing to put in this work, you know? Um, so yeah, what signs resonated with you? Was there anything that you would add to this list? Is there any reasons you would think you're polyamorous that I didn't mention? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, but yeah, it could be I'm okay with my partners having partners, or it could be just your individual self. I always said, as far as my partners having partners, that I valued honesty over monogamy. Um, but outside of that, like, do you, but I don't really need to be involved. I'm polyamorous for me, you know, like... Yeah, <laughs> I'm willing to grow through the stuff with my partner, um, but I'm polyamorous for me. <laughs> so let me know why you could be polyamorous. And if you can't, why are you on this video? Like, you can just, <laughs> you don't have to comment. You can just embrace your mon monogamous self. Like, no one is trying to change you. But anyways... <laughs> Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure you check out the rest of my polyamorous journey and like, share, and subscribe. Help me get monetized. And uh, let me know how you're feeling the new do. I know it's different because I had locks for six years, baby. And that was all my channel. So definitely embracing a new do on my channel. And I'm excited for it. But all right. <laughs> Light and love.